We throw around terms like pocket logo print, back prints, and as the name implies, we have a general idea as far as where these should be landing, but how do we get them perfectly placed in the software? Stefan here with All American Print Supply. In today's video, we'll be breaking down how to get the most commonly requested print locations dialed in perfectly with our RIP software. Using the Epson line of direct to garment, this will apply for the F2000, the F2100, the F3070, or the upcoming F2270. Garment Creator is a very useful, friendly tool to get perfect prints in high resolution. And if you have any questions on anything we go over in today's video, go ahead and leave it in the comment section down below. Let's get printing. So first off, let's start with the back print. Let's get the larger graphic already on the garment and then we'll move from there. Let's load this guy on the machine. Now I've already got my platen height adjusted to a level 1.5, which should be ideal for printing onto this ring spun cotton garment. To load it onto the platen, I'm gonna take it from the sides with these handy side seams and I'm gonna load it straight onto the machine like so. Now I'm gonna use the stitches on both sides of the garment where the sleeves connect to make sure that it's nice and even. After I've used the side seams on the sleeve stitching to make sure it's nice and even, I'm gonna go ahead and use about a four finger mark to have the collar actually hanging off the platen. Let's go ahead and lock this into place with the hoop and we'll show you in the software right now why we left this four finger gap from the neckline. Let's throw it to Garment Creator. Okay, now we've already brought our graphic into the software here to get this up and printed. Let's just make some layout adjustments really quick. Now, as you can see, this oversized graphic, which is ideal for printing, bigger is better. I'd rather we shrink down those images to keep that resolution versus expanding a smaller graphic where things may pixelate. So with this 14 by 16 platen, we're doing a big back. Let's go ahead and get this guy to 13 inches, and then it automatically adjusts the ratio for length and width. Now, the reason I left that four finger gap when I loaded the garment onto the platen, we're gonna send this top center. So now, the software is telling me exactly where the image is gonna print on the garment, and because we gave that four finger gap, I already know it's gonna be in the perfect positioning. Let's go ahead and send the job. And there we have it. The blue light is indicating that all the data is received on the direct to garment printer. Let's go ahead and get a print. All right, let's take a look here. Now that is good positioning. It's not gonna be right up on the back of my neck when I'm actually wearing this. That's why I like to start off with the larger print first. Let's go ahead and get this guy all cured. Now before I actually do close down the heat press machine to cure the actual print, this hover method right here with my swing away is very convenient. It begins to dry the garment organically without any contact. That should be plenty. Now when it is time to close the actual machine onto the wet print, I wanna make sure our heating element is protected by using one of these reusable thick double-sided coated sheets. And at 350 degrees Fahrenheit, CMYK print, this guy will be cured up and ready in under a minute. All righty, let's take a look. This one came out nice. We're almost there, guys. Let's go ahead and get back on the machine, print that pocket logo. Now, because it's a pocket logo, we do want to be very careful with how we load the garment and how we send the job in the software. We don't want the image lining up around the collarbone, armpit, or in the middle of the shirt. So same like how we loaded the back print, I'm gonna get the sides of the garment using these handy side seams. Let's load this on nice and straight. Just like the platen's wearing the actual garment, thread it on nice and easy. Again, using the stitchings here to find a nice center point of the machine and get this loaded. Now on this instance, we're not putting a gap. I'm gonna have the collars literally sitting right at the edge of the platen. I'm gonna go ahead and load this in on here like so. Make sure the fabric's nice and flat. Now let's let the garment creator do all the heavy lifting for us. All right, now because it's gonna be a pocket logo, ideally you'd want this, I'd say, roughly between about four to four and a half degrees wide, depending on the size of the image. So let's go ahead and adjust our sizing here, just like so, let the height and width ratio out. Now the reason we placed the garment with the neck collar right on there is because this garment creator software is sort of like a grid. So think of this graph with a zero, zero axis point in the very center, and then we can enter our coordinates right here in the positioning. So for horizontal, we're gonna go ahead and drop that to a three, and that's gonna bring it over to right alignment with the edge of our collar, which should always be the center point of a pocket logo. And now for our vertical alignment, we're gonna go ahead and run that at a three also. So you can have a visual representation of what you see in the software. we got the print ready to go. This guy's ready to send. Let's get it printed. Data's already received on the Epson F2100. Send the job. All 
All right, there we go. No guesswork when you're using Garmin Creator. With our coordinates that we entered, we have precise and exact control exactly where the print's gonna land every time. Now for our cure settings on here, just like the back print, we're gonna be working at about 350 degrees Fahrenheit, and in under a minute, we'll have this front cured there. For a CMYK print like this, I like to go about 45 seconds. All right, we're just gonna get this guy back loaded on the heat press, and I'm making sure that the stitches on the collar and the sleeves are not on the platen, meaning my heating element's gonna make nice, even contact. And again, any amount of hovering before you actually close the heat press will help with your curing. This will keep more of your vibrancy and boldness. That should be okay. Let's go ahead and swing this away, place our protective cover sheet, go ahead and lock it down. And after this is dried, we'll get that neck label printed. Now we're almost done, but I'm not really feeling this generic hang tag on here. Let's go ahead and rip that off. We're gonna show you a simple hack to get custom neck label printed easily with the F2100. All right, now first thing we're gonna do, because we are using a smart blanks, we got a handy tearaway tag. Now, before we load this onto the platen, let's go ahead and turn this inside out. And we're gonna make sure we're loading this properly with the side that we want the neck label on. We don't want it on the inside of the front. Same like before, we're using the edges and the side seams of the garment to load this on nice and straight. Total control there. I'm just gonna be adjusting to make sure that the stitching is even on both sides so we have a nice center point. Once we got that centered, I'm gonna pull this forward about a finger and a half from the edge of the platen. We don't want it right up on the stitch mark. Once we've got this loaded, we'll go ahead and place our hoop to keep this nice in position. And then another pro tip is to gently pull around the edges of the garment to make sure things are nice and flat. Let's throw it to Garment Creator and go over how we're gonna print this neck label with no pre-treat. Okay, so we got our images right here. Let's go ahead and grab this generic neck label we have, and we're gonna drop this into the software. Now, if you notice on screen, this is a gray graphic, meaning if we use the same settings we've been working on, CMYK only, using those four colors, the machine will use those colors to produce the gray, meaning we don't need a pre-treat because there's no white ink. Basically, this neck label hack can be applied to any color garment, black, blue, heather gray, what have you, and still get a great result. Now we got our profile already loaded. Let's go ahead and size this up. We're gonna go with about a three and a half inch wide neck label. The height will adjust for us automatically. And because we left that little gap, the top center placement is gonna give this exactly precise location where we want it inside of the garment. Print quality setting wise, we'll run these numbers right here. Normal print level four. Let's go ahead and hit the print button. Send the data to the machine. Here we go. There we have it. Right on screen here, we got all of our information, everything's labeled, and because of the quality settings and the color we use, we don't have to worry about any of that ink showing through on here. Again, this hack will work on any different color garment you're printing your custom neck labels on with your DTG, no need to pre-treat. So as you can see, these baseline settings and starter coordinates are gonna be ideal, and we used a men's large garment. Now to find your exact placement, we are always gonna advise test, test, test. Now it's worth noting, on a smaller garment, images can sit a little bit taller or higher on the garment to maintain ratio, and if it's a larger garment, they can actually sit a little bit lower. So again, test, 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 guys. And that's all, folks. These are the simple steps to get the most popular print locations with the most popular line of direct-to-garment printer. You know, Garment Creator is a very user-friendly tool to get high-resolution images and exact placement. So if you're running the F2000, the F2100, the Epson F3070, or the upcoming F2270, these simple steps will help you get perfect placement every time. That's pretty much gonna wrap it up for this video. If you do have any questions, go ahead and leave that in the comment section down below. We have seen a lot of our views coming in from non-subscribers. So if you landed on this video and you haven't done so already, go ahead and hit that red subscribe button. That's all for this one, guys. To infinity and beyond.